Here we're addressing the maxillary arch as we have shown you already. Full flap reflection, edentulation, placement of the bone foundation guide. It's now indexed as you see here and appropriate holes are drilled for pin fixation. Now the struts are removed in this particular um, foundation guide. It's been changed now over the past year or so to where we have it a little bit different, but uh, at any rate, the struts are removed, the reduction is, is done as I've shown you, and now seating of the surgical guide. So osteotomies are now accomplished, allowing for implant placement. This is an aggressive thread design as you see here on the uh, implant. And uh, it's an it's a Nobel active implant and the insertion torques are at least 30, 35 newton centimeters or greater. Here you're seeing the rotational indexing of the implants. That dictates the depth of these implants so we know exactly how deep they are within the um, guide. So now the mounts are removed. Surgical guide will be removed. And we'll irrigate any bone that's residual around the implant bodies. We're using our bone milling devices to uh, again assure that there is no bone at the rim of the body of the implants. Multi unit abutments are now placed one by one. And each time an MUA is placed, the prosthesis is put into the mouth to make sure that we have good draw. Here we're just placing the gasket with the prosthesis and, the, and a bite index that allows us to index that prosthesis against the opposing arch. But that's all removed because we're going to continue with placement of the multi unit abutments. And as you see here, the um, MUAs are placed one by one as we discussed. And once that's done, or I should say why that's being done, I'm just showing you how we're mixing our LPRF with uh, autogenous bone that we had obtained already and if we need more bone we'll use typically a mineralized allograft. Here the copings are being positioned. They have been pre-selected, pre-cut and they're in place now. They're blocked out with the gasket in, in position and now our prosthesis the secured opposing bite And again, a dual cure composite, flowable composite is um, placed within these holes, allowing for a vent at each implant. And once that has cured, the prosthesis, of course, is removed. And now we're looking at both upper and lower prostheses. The foundation guide is now finally removed and at this point in time grafting of the maxillary arch. Here you're seeing LPRF membranes along with a collagen membrane that will be secured. And we're putting LPRF membranes both below and above the collagen membrane. And then finally primary closure will uh, occur with the healing abutments. And while this is being done, of course, the maxillary prosthesis is being refined, as we talked about earlier. Next, the healing abutments are removed and the prosthesis is positioned. Screw fixation of the uh, hybrid is now done. And that completes the maxillary arch. We then turn our attention to the mandibular arch, which we will have localized already in ferrovillar blocks and infiltration, full flap reflection, extractions, foundation guide placed, indexed against the opposing uh, arch, in this case, the hybrid prosthesis. And once that is secured, we can remove the bite, of course, 
removed the struts that allowed for the process for the um, foundation guide to not uh, be um, mobile at all, not be flexible. The ostectomy is then performed, and again, as we saw in the maxilla, the surgical guide is now placed in a position, and implants are placed accordingly. Once that is done, the mounts are removed and the surgical guide uh, will be removed as well. And just as we did in the maxilla, once again, we'll remove any residual bone around the implant bodies and begin to place the um, multi-unit abutments as you see here. One at a time. And from a time standpoint, again, you can imagine being able to have all these component parts pre-selected and ready to be placed into the mouth without any alteration, etc. Here the gasket is in place, the prosthesis with the bite registration, blockouts of the copings, and now we'll pick up the mandibular prosthesis with the dual cure flowable composite resin that is then removed for refinement. Grafting of any defects using our PRF as well. And again, primary closure is obtained while the process is being refined. Now the copings are removed, I should say the healing abutments are removed, and the mandibular prosthesis is now positioned, fixed in, into place. And fine tuning of both maxillary and mandibular prostheses. And the bite typically with these two arch cases really takes only a matter of minutes to uh, equilibrate. It's surprisingly accurate and there's a one month follow-up. So now at this point, here's one month and seven months later for Joanne. And why seven months when we talked about four to five months is an upper uh, time limit for uh, conversion to the final prosthesis? Well, uh, Joanne is a busy uh, young lady and by the time we connected um, for that final prosthesis, at least seven months had come and gone. She was very happy, by the way, with her provisionals, as all of our patients are. As you can see, the aesthetics are excellent. And here's Joanne, full view and profile. And that's what the cone beam CT looks like. And here we are at a year and a half later, completed prosthetics in both arches, a full arch zirconia, maxilla, and an acrylic wrap in the mandible. That's typically the combination we like to use for our dual arch cases. And there we are, completed prosthetics. And our final cone beam CT. And our before and after. You can see the difference in Joanne's face, and we see this so often. We transform people's lives. It's so dramatic in many of our patients, uh, where they all of a sudden just, wow. <laughs> they look at themselves differently. They dress differently, their self-image has definitely been changed for the better. Now this is just a video clip of our, uh, one of our patients that we uh, actually had at one of our live surgery courses. Let's take, take a look, big smile, look at your little, little teeth, right up the elevator, look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're numbed up still, there oh we go, God. pretty neat. Oh you're going to be able to smile and, and be proud, right? <laughs> oh, God, thank you. So at the end of the day, it's really about quality of life. And that's what we're looking at for our patients. They have a better self-image without a doubt. They, they feel better about themselves. They begin to eat better. They dress better. Um, we are literally transforming lives. And of all of the work that I've been involved with in my 33 years of 
private practice as an oral maxillofacial surgeon. Uh, in terms of implant uh, involvement, again, I've placed implants in my early years uh, from day one pretty much. But it was about 21 years ago that I focused in just this arena of implant surgical reconstruction. And in all of this time, of all the work I've been involved with, nothing compares to this type of protocol, meaning addressing full arch and full mouth reconstruction for our patients. We definitely are transforming their lives more than any other work that we do. And it is very satisfying as a result, certainly for our patients and definitely for us as clinicians. So I highly recommend that you look at this particular protocol and consider implementing it into your private practice. We will definitely transform our patients' lives without question.